So I've created my own gas station that makes fuel from plastic waste. Let's go. So this is plastic crude oil and as you can see we have quite a bit of this plastic crude oil but this itself is not fuel. Well it can be fuel but we need to refine it and clean it up so let's do that. This is my refiner. We put the oil in here and it comes out as clean products. Plastiline. I gotta thank all the Patreon members, everybody who's donated to this project. If you want to donate, you can go to naturejab.com slash donate. You can get some merch. I want to let everybody know you saw me loading in plastic, you know, through the front of the machine. But soon, thanks to all your donations and help, I will have a new plastic shredder. You can see this right here. This shredder was very expensive, $3,000, but I want to appreciate all you because you, all of you have made this possible. So soon, we will get these efficiency numbers up, and we will no longer be doing this the ghetto way. Thank you guys so much. Thank you all the Patreon members, everybody who's ever donated, Super Chats, live streams, Cash Apps, everything. I appreciate you guys. All right, we got a lot of upgrades to the plastic into fuel reactor. Let's start. Well, most obviously over here, what is this? BVV has given me a 40-foot stainless steel jacketed wart coil. That's right. So this is jacketed. Cold water runs on the outside. There's a coil on the inside that's cooled by that. And this is 40 foot of coil to allow better condensation of my 
petroleum vapors into oils. Now, also take a, lo a notice at, uh, you know, well, this keg is straight up and down. The keg used to be on its side. Well, yes, it is straight up and down now. Uh, this helps with the balance way better. If you noticed before, it was kind of tilting. So anyways, the vapors will go through this pipe, and this pipe is just a straight pipe going down. But since this pipe is just exposed to air like this, you know, everything else is insulated, well, this pipe gets very hot and loses a lot of its heat. And so this acts as a big condenser, actually. So a lot of oils will actually condense on this pipe, but it doesn't get them all. The oils that don't condense through that pipe actually will condense on the walls of the keg because it's cold. And then those oils that don't condense out of there will then go into this cold 8-inch by 24-inch shotgun condenser, once again, from BVV. Thank you guys so much, Best Value Vax. Get your exactor equipment from them. Shop.bvv.com. It's amazing stuff. And so after it goes into this big 8-inch um, condenser, I noticed before... That this still wasn't enough. There would still be some water and moisture and oils left in my vapors. So I, I, I reached out to VBV and I was like, guys, you guys got something I can do to get even more surface area. And then they hooked me up with this coil. So this coil does this, the trick. The rest of the, the um, vapors are going to go through all of this. <laughs> now, all this is happening under vacuum, remember? So they go through all of this and then they reach this section here where... If there are any type of oils that condense out of this or anything, it's going to fall down here. And I've ran this machine many, many times. I've never actually seen any type of thing happen. But you do kind of see a little bit of wax that did finally come out. Just a little bit. And that's the only bit of oil I've ever seen. And any oil that falls into this, there'll be so little. But we'll be able to see it through all these glasses. And I can just open this valve up at the end of the machine to get it to fall into the keg. The next update or upgrade is this right here. This is a six foot filter column for my plastic mate natural gas or as I call it unnatural gas. So this column is six foot of activated alumina, activated carbon, bentonite, and at the very top here just some molecular sieves. And the idea of this is to get all the moisture out as possible and also to catalytically react with anything and adsorb anything that could be really toxic in the plastic mate natural gas. So for example, if there was benzene in there, the activated carbon would get it. If there was any type of sulfur dioxide for some reason, even though plastic doesn't have sulfur, the activated carbon would get it. So anything nasty gets caught, then it goes into this system right here, and this is another water filter, oil filter, molecular sieve beads. I've actually ran this machine a few times, and you see these molecular sieve beads, they turn gray when they're full, they're still blue. So all this, you know, all these condensing upgrades and filter upgrades have been helping immensely because those things used to go gray after every single run. So we're barely getting moisture ending up in the tanks now, which is great for safety, right? The last upgrade I've done is I've added this system. So with the keg standing up now, well, I had it on its side so I could open up at the bottom to get oil to fall out with the valve. You remember that? Well, that's ghetto, and I'm done with that. Now we actually have a proper pump system. So there's actually, <laughs> I made my own gas line in a way. So there's a, a pipe that's underground, running underground, comes up, boom, and then it goes into a pump. The pump goes into here, and then it go, can come out in a proper fuel nozzle pump. Unfortunately, my pump broke. I had this other pump. This pump's not strong enough to pull everything through. So it's <laughs> I got to get a new pump. I only was able to test it once, but I did make a short of it. Everything looked so cool. So that's amazing, and we got this. So those are all the upgrades to the machine. And you guys already know from your boy Nature Jeff, I'm always upgrading. You can look, you can just go two videos ahead from this video, and I promise you, there'll be even more upgrades. I am always innovating. So that's the machine. Here on this scale, I have four pounds or 2.1 kilos of LDPE low density polyethylene inside of these trash bags now all of this fit inside of this 55 gallon drum so guys when i tell you we need to shred the plastic to get the most efficiency it's no cap it's no lie it's just straight facts because we could probably fit up to 30 pounds of shredded plastic in there but i promise you we'll barely be able to fit all this in the bloody machine so anyways we're gonna just put ldpe plastic bags inside of this machine that way we can do our first ever LDPE analysis run. So let's do it. So we're just loading in this LDPE low density polyethylene by hand. You know how I have to do it. And for those of you wondering where the analysis of the HDPE is, 
it's definitely on the way. The professor just got the package and has done the analysis. So he's currently just working on getting the data compiled. So we'll have those results come back very soon. So it's perfect timing. By the time we get those results, we'll have these sent out to him. And we'll just have a little assembly line, I guess. And we'll, I'll get the next samples. W what should we do next, guys? Comment below. What type of plastic should I do next? Should we do polypropylene, polyethyl terephthalate, PET, which are like water bottles, or styrofoam? I'll let you guys decide what we do next. Four pounds of plastic bags. That's what it looks like. Takes up quite a bit of space unshredded. Let's see how this machine can handle it. After pulling a decent vacuum on the machine, we go ahead and get it started. So an hour into the run, the temps are looking okay. What's happening is I only have five out of my six magnetrons on. The front magnetron is not functional right now. I had to end up replacing it, which I did later. So that kept the temperatures pretty cool, but we did get some oil coming out. This run is not for efficiency or anything like that. It's purely just to collect this sample. About three hours in, you know the machine's hot when you can do this. Take a bottle of water. Turn that thing into steam on contact. The water insta vaporizes on this thing. So we finished the run out at three hours. The temperatures across the board of the whole machine were over 200 degrees C. Every single part of the machine, the front, the middle, the back. Since then, everything has cooled down some. A protocol I do nowadays is after I turn off all the power, I let the recovery pump run for another like 10, 15 minutes just to get out as many of the vapors as we can. The extra vapors, that is. But of course, vapors will keep forming because it's such high temperatures. Pyrolysis still occurs even with no extra power going in. Anyways, we consume 25 kilowatt hours. And now, let's get our oil. So the run total three hours, we consume 25 kilowatt hours of electricity, and this is the part of the time where this just annoyed me so much. So you know I had this new fuel pump system, and this is a double-edged sword because on one end it's really cool, but then on the other end, if the pump doesn't work, I have literally no other way to get these oils out the keg, and that's what happened. By my luck, the bloody pump just straight up died. It just stopped working. And I'm like, what in the world? So then I had to, I have this other fuel pump that I had just sitting around, but this fuel pump is nowhere near like the, the, the proper, you know, power nor size of that one. It's not made for this. So I, I hooked it up, it took forever to hook it up. And um, yeah, it worked a little bit. It got some of the oils out, but then, well, look, just, it couldn't do it. It just kind of pooped itself out there, mate. And it was just so annoying because it's like, dude, I need my oils, I did all this run, I have no more LDP in my storage anymore to do another run, and I barely could get my oils out. Luckily we got enough out for analysis, but I wanted to just get all the oils out of the keg, so that way I could have a ton of buffer oil to make sure there was no residual oil from the last runs in there. But hopefully, we'll be okay. Uh, so anyways, I went ahead, I poured what I got out before the pump just stopped pumping into the beaker. This is more than enough for analysis, more than enough for a light distillation. So, I'll get another pump on the way, guys, but that's what we got for now. So, we got, like, what, 250 mil of this uh, crude LDPE oil. So, thank you for watching, guys, and we'll get this analysis going.